Um, Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, and I'm going to be acting um, as chair tonight um, in, in Millie's place. She, she got pulled away. So um, welcome and please bear with me. <laughs> this might be, um, you know, it's my first time. So um, meeting will come to order. And if I may ask staff to please take roll call. Okay, um, Vice Chair Bond. Present. Present. Commissioner Boldenwick. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Bowen. Commissioner Dinatali. Present. Commissioner Foley. Commissioner Foley. I think he's connecting to audio. Yeah. Maybe come back to him in a minute. I'll come back to him. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Lester will be absent today. Here. Commissioner Foley. Here. Okay. <laughs> Here. Got it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Maharaj. Present. Commissioner Pomposo. And Commissioner Ramos. Uh, present. Thank you. Commissioner Celaya. Present. Thank you. Okay. Um, did we record that Commissioner Pomposo is here? Uh no. Yes, yeah, she, she she is. I just think her here. audio wasn't um coming up. Yeah. Okay, so she is present. Thank you. Um, so agenda review, are there any changes to the published agenda? None from staff. Okay. And then um, are there any, um, oh, sorry. Um, are there any changes to the minutes? And if, well, I guess I'll pause. Are there any changes to the minutes from last time? And if there are no changes, then uh, we'll let the minutes stand as sent. Um, and then um, we have, uh, I'm gonna ask if there's citizen participation and we also have artists, um, I believe from um, the Day of the Dead show. So in addition to the artists invited, are, are there any citizens um, participating tonight? Not that I'm aware of. I don't see any other than the artists, I believe, right, Ursi? Correct. Um, is there any unfinished business other than what's on the agenda? I believe before we get into the unfinished business, we'll do the presentation of the artists. Oh, great. Okay. Very good. Um, well, I would like to um, turn this over um, to Lynn um, to introduce the artists and Ursi. Uh, I don't know who is doing the introductions for the artists, but welcome artists and I will turn it over. Uh, I'll take uh, I'll take o over because uh, <laughs> Lynn wasn't aware of, of who is gonna be coming today or not. So, um, uh, as you know, or commissioners, for those of you that are new, uh, after our um, art gallery exhibits, um, we uh, invite our artists to a public cultural arts meeting to get represent uh, get acknowledgments for their for their um, achievement in terms of awarding. And so today we have invited the recipients. Uh, we have a couple of artists here with us today. Uh, and I, we also have a little bit of a um, presentation here, which shows the work uh, of all the artists that were awarded. So some selected works, not, not every single one of them, but selected works. And so I guess we'll start with the presentation. And I do believe that the first slide, uh, which Angela will move to, uh, is by artist Marlene Kono, who is here 
today. Uh, so her piece was Colores de Corazón, and you see it pictured there. It was a color photograph that received uh, honorable mention in two-dimensional works. Um, and I, I don't know if, Marlene, if you'd like to say a few words about your um, artwork, uh, you're certainly free to do so at this time. Um. I was just fascinated with the um, papel picado, the colorfulness of the paper. And um, that was a big um, ofrenda underneath it. I decided to uh, lie down in order to get that shot. Well, that, that's a, a lovely work, and we appreciate your participation in this. Um, so we'll go on to the next slide, which is, is um, the Day of the Dead wall quilt. Um, I know this artist was going to try to be with us today, but she is out of town, so she wasn't um, uh, able to commit with certainty. Um, this was a wall quilt uh, that was uh, done by our greenhouse quilter uh, Dahlia Gribanas, um, and it received honorable mention in two-dimensional art. Um, and then following that uh, is uh, a, a new artist with the commission. Uh, this is artist Mateo Fuentes, who also had hoped to be here today, but it was is having um, is obligated, has work obligations, so he wasn't sure he was going to be able to, but he was going to try. Uh, at any rate, his uh, piece, Major Tom, uh, received uh, third place in two-dimensional uh, work. Uh, then following that is the a, another two-dimensional piece uh, here, which received second place. It was by uh, artist Gloria Andres Newman. Um, title was Marigold. And following that, we have our first place uh, winner uh, created by Karen Mitchell, who was a returning artist. She uh, had an entry in our July art show. Uh, the title of this piece is Beauty. It was a watercolor and it received first place in two-dimensional work. Um, and then following that, we've got our three-dimensional pieces. Uh, this one was a shirt by artist Cynthia Markopoulos, uh, titled Deadwood Saloon Shirt. Uh, it received third place, 3D. Uh, Cynthia, I don't know if she has she arrived. No, she was uh, uh, responded that she would be here, but uh, I guess that she ran into some situation as well. So uh, following that is um, a piece by artist Stephanie Bernstein. And this was a three-dimensional piece titled To All the Musicians I Have Loved and Died. Uh, it is acrylic paint on wood and canvas, and it received second place in three dimension. And our artist, Stephanie Bernstein, is in attendance today. Thank you for coming, Stephanie. And if you'd like to say a few words about your piece, you need to unmute yourself. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it, but um, it was just a tribute to the Day of the Dead's altars or the um, Afrende. I'm sure I'm mashing that up really badly. But, um, and I, you know, I just wanted to kind of make the symbolism of the Day of the Dead um, in a three piece. And it just kind of evolved, honestly. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Well, yes. Creativity evolves, so that's a wonderful thing. Um, and I think uh, the last piece here was by artist Irene Fikes. She was a first time participant with us. She entered uh, this piece of hand-built clay sculpture, which received first place in three dimension and also was awarded best of show. Um, and, and that concludes the presentation. Um, we have um, these pieces are in our atrium window currently. The final date of the atrium exhibit live, you can come and see it live, um, is uh, 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 November 28th. It's a Monday. And um, the Art gallery, the virtual galleries are still open and those are also accessible um, through the 28th. So 
please feel free to either check out their work uh, online or come into the municipal services building to see it live. And um, I, I just would uh, like to invite if the commission has any comments for our artists um, and then to our artists also, you're welcome to stay. This is a public meeting or whenever you choose to leave, you may. So first I leave it to the chair, uh, through the chair to the commission um, if they have any comments. Well, I certainly would like to comment. Um, get back on video. Um, I would certainly like to comment. Thank you so much for sharing your art with us, your creativity with us. Um, it's it was a great show. Um, your pieces really stood out, obviously, um, and um, just a, it was great to see the breadth of expression as well. Um, so thanks for for coming here and commenting, and um, definitely thanks for participating in the show. It was wonderful. And I would like to thank all the artists once again, whether you're present or at home. I truly appreciate your time and effort and in your ability to adapt. Um, I know that there were several people who had never, ever done anything like this before, and their entries were amazing. So I do thank you all for your participation. Great. Um, any other comments? I always forget that mute button. Um, I just want to say thank you to whoever was involved in having this exhibit because it's a great opportunity for artists to showcase their work. And it was fun because it was the Day of the Dead, and I I really thought that was you know a great theme to use for October. But anyway, but really, I just want to extend a thank you and um, an appreciation. Wonderful. Well, we we have another show coming up in January, and the um, the call for um, for pieces to come out will be uh, I think going out later um, this month or early December. So keep your eyes peeled, please. Will keep do. submitting. It's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Um, Marlene and Stephanie, I just, you know, I know we're allowed to say comments. I just feel words can't do justice, uh, at least for your pieces. I know it's a talent I don't have. So just, I just have to kind of stand, sit back and off and just, it's really impressive all the pieces that are there, but it's the fact that you both can be present and mention a little bit about what inspired you to do it. It's really cool. So thanks for being present in our meeting. Great. Okay. Well, with that, um, as as Ursi mentioned, you're welcome to stay. We're going to um, move on to our unfinished business, and I believe Ursi that is turning it back over to you for the um, for the subcommittee reorganization goals and survey. Yes. Thank you, Risha. Um, Yes. Um, so uh, earlier, earlier this month or a couple of weeks ago, uh, the subcommittee participation survey was emailed out to all the commission. Uh, so the hope was to get um, surveys submitted uh, in terms of what commissioners wanted to do uh, for their goals, what what committee subcommittees they wanted to sign up for. Um, it just gives you an opportunity uh, to remain, change, or um, consider another um, subcommittee for the participation in 2023. It also allowed our newer commissioners to sign up for uh, a committee or two that they might want to uh, participate in. Um, I want to start by saying that the survey is fluid. It is not is not the end um, last end word of of what will happen. Um, it um, the committee subcommittee member may change their status or subcommittee at any point in time during the year. But this will allow us to organize ourselves, both staff and commission, um, in preparation for the work that will begin in 2023. Actually, to 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 be honest, the work that will continue uh, through December and uh, then uh, continue into 2023. Um, so just a little bit on what we have to date. Uh, we have had we had five surveys submitted to date. Um, members can still submit surveys uh, and um, 
Uh, we do understand that perhaps some of you that have not submitted yet are still considering your options, um, looking at your schedules, forecasting your personal um, obligations in the year. So I, we totally understand that. I would say that if you have any questions uh, about the subcommittee to please feel free to contact us staff or the subcommittee chair of, of the subcommittee that you might have a question on to help uh, guide your decision. Um, uh, Angela, I, I don't know, if, did you get the update of the survey to date? So, uh, so while well, Angela is looking for that, uh, so this is uh, uh, our goals and subcommittees, but it is a transitional uh, document. It, just to, as we are making, as you all are making this, these, these decisions, um, a couple of things to consider is that it reflects uh, the uh, subcommittee participation submissions that have been received. Um, as well as those that are still um, um, have not come in yet. Um, just to guide you, uh, no, nobody has been deleted off a, a committee uh, unless they have directed me to via their subcommittee uh, surveys. Uh, so you will see there that there are names listed in blue font. The blue font indicates that we have your update for uh, updated survey, your, your request for the upcoming year. Um, and so we have indicated that in blue font. Um, some of the commissioners have indicated uh, that they are open to stepping down from a, a subcommittee or the chairmanship uh, if they if there are members uh, that really desire to do so, uh, so that they are leaving that open. So you will see that there are a couple of subcommittee uh, members have that little blue asterisk by their names. Um, and then in black print, you will see the members that are uh, in the subcommittees, but uh, still have yet to give us their direction in, in terms of the survey. So we have not deleted you, you're there. Um, it's just that we would um, are hoping to get the update and confirm your participation or changes should you choose to change uh, your subcommittees. Um, let's see. Um, I'm sorry, Ursi, could I? Go ahead. I yes. have a question for you, um, it, or it's a question for me, but also to remind the group. Could you remind us, like now that we have new commissioners, what the um, maximum size of each subcommittee can be? Uh, I believe that number is six, or it's either five or six. Angela, do you have a five? Five. five. Okay. okay, five. Okay, and you will see too. I mean, if you're hesitant, your the question came up in a survey. If you're not sure, uh, the survey does allow you to put in uh, your question or your possible uh, tentative participation as an other. Uh, so feel free to use that box um, if you're considering, but not sure, or if you have any questions, you know, just feel free to put in as much information as you feel would help either uh, inform your decision or, um, you know, guide us as we're uh, uh, consolidating this list. Um, uh, you will note uh, also that we do have one a subcommittee chairmanship open there that is the fundraising subcommittee. Um, so uh, if you uh, have skills and are inclined to uh, work as a chair, uh, that would uh, you can certainly um, opt to select that. Um, the members there may want to uh, meet amongst themselves or and select from one of their membership as well uh, to uh, be chair in that um, that particular um, subcommittee. The, the function of the chair uh, is to connect with the memberships, with the members, and then act as spokesperson or, or communicator to staff. So that function is really important for us as staff to get the direction of the members by, by the one party that will speak for the membership of that, of that particular fundraising, of that particular subcommittee. Um, if you have any questions, if 
for some reason, there's an error there in terms of those uh, subcommission subcommittee members that have already uh, sent there. Please feel free to contact me and let me know. Um, I'm happy to uh, help as much as I can with those decisions, should you need that assistance. Um, and then we will, uh, since obviously uh, we have, need to get a little bit more input from other members, we will send another reminder in September uh, with the link and give you a deadline uh, so that we'll hopefully we'll have this all in place by January. Are there any questions? Percy, I, I just want to point out to the commission also that at the last meeting, um, there was a vote to cancel the May art show in favor of hosting, um, uh, focusing efforts on a fundraising event that could possibly include an art exhibit component. And so this, this might come up under the subcommittee updates, but I, I just want to point out the importance of having a chair um, in place for for that reason, if that is the commission's intent to move forward with that plan that was decided at the last meeting. Sorry, Angela, can you clarify, you are thinking that we should still have a chair for the show three to help with the possible um, art exhibit overlap with fundraising? Um, well, is that what you're saying? Just that it's an, important to have a chair for the fundraiser if the commission oh, gotcha. intent of course, of was to yes. have a combined art exhibit. And, and then, uh, you know, I think since that exhibit piece is still to be determined, you know, the commission may decide to have someone like oversee the exhibit and then one person oversee the fundraiser. But in any case, it just um, highlights that the intent behind the decision, as I understood it, was to focus mm -hmm. on fundraising. So mm -hmm. we need a fundraising chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, when do when do the subcommittees meet? I mean, is there a set day or time, or um, is it by Zoom also? Um, so uh, yes, thank you. Good question, Lydia. The well, while we were in COVID, uh, yes, we were pretty much all in Zoom. But now that we're beginning to come out uh, and transition out of COVID, really, it's up to the subcommittee chair and members when they want to meet uh, and how they want to meet. Uh, staff, if the direction of the subcommittee chair is to conduct a, a Zoom meeting, staff can help facilitate that if necessary. But um, or if the subcommittee needs to ask staff some question and has staff present at their subcommittee meeting, we staff can can help uh, in that regard too. But really, it just depends um, um, on the on the membership of that particular subcommittee how often they meet and when and how. Okay, thanks, Ursi. Mm -hmm. Um, Ursi, uh, this is Lynn. I um, submitted the uh, questionnaire and I see my name in black instead of the blue. Mm -hmm. So I will give you a call tomorrow. I'll look okay. on my computer and see if I can find it. Okay. Uh, I can resend you the link too, Lynn. I did not receive it, but maybe it's just okay. some com weird computer thing. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All right. Thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you all. Are there any other questions or comments on on, on this uh, on the subcommittee survey? Okay. Well, I want to say thank you very much, Ursi, for pulling that together and explaining it, and also very nice explanation on the um, Day of the Dead show. Very nice uh, presentation. Um, so, is there? I, I believe. That is all on the agenda for the unfinished business. Is there any other unfinished business not on the agenda? Okay. Um, so moving on, um, we have new business and we have the cultural arts funding review with, with Angela, please. Yes, one moment while I set up my presentation here.
Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. So the purpose of this presentation is to review the cultural arts program's existing funding sources to help the commission in the planning and prioritization of art projects. And in September, one of the agenda topics that we covered um, included planning for art opportunities and much of that conversation focused on um, staff priorities to uh, achieve the cultural arts based program. So that would be things like your four quarterly art exhibits, the scholarship um, and council approved projects. So this presentation is an accompaniment to what we discussed in September, but instead of um, focusing on the staffing part, it's really about the funding sources for art opportunities. So these are the uh, different funding sources that I'll be covering in my presentation. We have a few different ones that we pull from and uh, starting with the general fund. So this accounts for many of the, what people um, traditionally understand as your basic city services. So this is where a lot of our tax dollars go to fund things like um, public safety, the library, parks and rec and maintenance. And so the general fund um, revenues come from property taxes, sales tax, licenses and permits and charges for services and that type of thing. So out of the city's general fund, and this is in the Parks and Recreation Department budget, um, we're funded for a 0.75 full-time cultural arts specialist, who you know as Ursi, and um, about $6,000 in operating supplies, which typically goes to your art exhibits. Um, so that could include program supplies like ribbons and certificates that go to artists, um, whatever special needs we have for the reception, food, um, mailings, and that kind of thing. And then we also have our city council approved projects. So this is typically one-time funding that staff request each year or comes at the direction of council to achieve um, whatever their goals are. So uh, what's showing on the screen in fiscal year 21-22, we received $11,000 to repair the Prometheus mural at the Caltrain Plaza. We've completed that project. Um, we also were able to roll over from last fiscal year $56,000 for graffiti abatement murals in two specific locations. Um, one is the Dubuque on-ramp and the other is the Airport Boulevard alcove. So we do have an RFQ um, in progress. I believe the Urban Art Subcommittee, um, I'm not sure if there's an update to that this month, but we are working on, on getting that out pretty soon. Um, and then for the current fiscal year, there is $10,000 in um, unrestricted art money that the commission can spend, as well as $10,000 in a cultural activities grant program that um, staff will bring more information to, to the commission um, in the new year. So um, oh, one thing I should mention about the $10,000 in the unrestricted public art allocation funding, this is uh, what Staff typically requests in the amount of $50,000. That's traditionally what the commission has received when times are good. Um, we do have all intents to approach the new fiscal year with this, the same request. It just it depends on um, you know, the city manager and city council direction about how much we actually get in the end. Um, in the past, that $50,000 or even for this $10,000 um, you could use it for sculpture purchases or installation costs. Um, given the amount, it's not, not that much. You could consider that 10,000 to supplement other opportunities that are partially funded. So, um, you know, maybe it's more graffiti abatement mural types of projects. We also um, have some capital projects that are, that I'll get into a little bit later. Um, 
they're not currently funded. It depends on what budget savings those projects realize, but you know, perhaps this could help make a difference in our ability to complete or um, even begin a certain art project. And then um, it can um, also sorry, Angela, could I could I um, ask you to, to pause for just a second? Yes. I see a, a hand up from Zubin. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, Zubin. No worries, Angela. Um, can we see the for 22, uh, 22, 23, but the two ten thousand dollar amounts? Are they you're marked for two distinct things, or can they be combined as twenty thousand? Well, I think that might depend on what you want to use it for. So I'll move on to, for the cultural activities grant program that was piloted one time in um, nineteen twenty. Same same amount, ten thousand dollars. And the intent behind it was to support, um, you know, local organizations or artists who want to offer free or low cost community events um, that would expose people to a new culture or, or um, you know, just some something to bring the community together. So it didn't necessarily have to be arts based. Um, I know that in the past it funded a, a concert. Um, there was also a dragon boat event to celebrate the culture of dragon boating. So I guess I, that's my long way of answering your question. Like perhaps if if that the unrestricted funding fell under the auspices of what the cult, the intent behind the cultural activities grant program, it's possible that that's what you could use it for. Thank you. So essentially, it's a it's a sub grant that the city grants to third party groups could be a nonprofit, could be an individual who wants to put on some sort of cultural activity, performance concerts, Angela mentioned, but it, 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 it typically lived within um, Park and Recreation Administration, but we see a strong nexus with the commission and feel that it might be most appropriate for commissioners to help manage that fund and dole it out to third party groups um, that they see provide the most benefit for the larger community. So it, it's an opportunity for you to grant money to individual artists, nonprofit groups. Um, we've done like Fiestas Patrias or uh, those sort of community events using that fund. Okay. That makes sense. Well, and, and as you all know, you know, the, the uh, ability for staff to follow through on so many fantastic project ideas is limited. This is kind of a way to encourage other people, like, you know, you want to put on a concert, go for it. Here's some money. Um, <laughs> so I think that was all for the general fund. Any other questions before I move on? And I, we can talk more also at the end. Yeah. On the, hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so on the graffiti abatement mural, does that mean just removing the graffiti or does that mean putting a mural where the graffiti is now? Putting a mural where the graffiti is now in the hopes that okay. uh, it will eliminate those issues. If, or areas that are historically prone to graffiti, um, perhaps area, you know, our, our public works department is pretty good at responding to these issues and painting them out. But we found, you know, um, uh, providing opportunities for artists to install these works are a good deterrent rather than sending our crews out there on a weekly basis to uh, paint over, uh, you know, gang graffiti or, or whatever. Okay, moving on to um, special revenue funds. So this accounts for donations or other accounts that are dedicated to a particular program. This is the fund that you all are most familiar with um, as the budget uh, report is typically included in your packet. Um, so what is special about maintaining this fund for the cultural arts program is that it allows you to make awards for juried art exhibits or um, you know awards for the Jack Drago uh, youth scholarship that would not be allowed under the general fund. 
So um, this fund typically has grown um, largely because of uh, your fundraising efforts. And so, you know, the, the successful $5,000, if I remember correctly, that you all earned um, from this past fundraiser went into this account. This is also where artist entry fees for your art exhibits go into, and pretty much those fees just offset the awards that come out of it. So um, it's, it's not really a money-making fund other than for your fundraising efforts. Uh, the balance currently is about thirty-two thousand dollars. This um, does not account, does not include the forty-five thousand dollars that was specified for Caltrain Art, and then um, typically, as shown in the budget report, there's three thousand dollars that historically has been encumbered for the scholarship annually. So, if the commission does consider spending um, part of this budget for other art opportunities, um, given the, the special nature that this is your fund to make awards to artists, you may also just want to consider what a good running balance is so that you can continue to comfortably make um, awards to artists moving forward. Any questions about this before I move on? So the, the 45,000 is, is locked into the Caltrain station for some Correct. future art project. Correct. Well, it's currently being so, held. Oh, go on. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, so other funds, as we get it, could also be incorporated into the Caltrain station or, or what? Correct. So the forty-five thousand is currently earmarked um, as a contingency for the sculpture that's going to be installed at the station. Mm -hmm. If that money is not needed, um, then the money could be released back to the commission for art in or around the Caltrain station. So that is a possibility. Um, it's just currently earmarked right now, but, uh, you know, we've got our fingers crossed that that budget will take care of itself and that the commission will have this funding to use as, as you wish at Caltrain. And I, I think we should know in the spring, right, Angela? As, as cost estimates come back in for that um, artwork, that, you know, half a million dollar installation at the Caltrain station, um, we'll be able to free that up, hopefully. Commissioner Dana Tully has a question. Yeah, hey Angela. Um, so in past years, I understood this balance to be carried over from that fifty thousand dollars that we didn't spend, and there be a separate line item that was dedicated to fundraising. Um, so I guess my question is just: is this this is now our fundraising special revenue line item and then moving forward what you just showed us previously is our unrestricted um amounts is that correct correct so that's the fifty thousand was separate that would be under uh, the, your general fund here um, or actually yeah. i should i should show it more here but so in the similar way that we rolled over this 56,000, this is earmarked money, but you know, traditionally the commission had 50. Um, we do have to go through a little bit of an administrative process to request that the money roll over, but it's something we've been able to do in the past, so. Okay, because as of 2019, I believe there was money that was there that we were banking to build and hold for a greater purchase um and i i thought that that was the rough amount that we had at that time but um yeah if this is the new accounting then the fifty thousand that was what we were using in 2019 to purchase um if if you know COVID hadn't happened the lantern sculptures and industrial era 
that was supposed to go downtown. That was part of that budget. Okay. And the, that was one of um, about $1.7 million in budget cuts the department suffered in 2019, 2020. No, I definitely remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Um, any other questions about the special revenue funds? Okay, and then we have grant opportunities. Um, of course, staff would love to be able to pursue more grants. Luckily, um, you know, the county partnered with us and, and, um, and, and we applied for the San Mateo County Arts Grant. I believe this will be coming out again this year we were funded um, $2,250 um, and the grant expires in December. So staff, we have um, since spent down this funding. This is part of the reason why we were able to fund some of the um, really great entertainment that you saw at the October art exhibit. And um, this also helped to cover some of the unbudgeted staff costs related to the public art master plan process. So, um, you know, grant opportunities are always a great way to supplement our funds, uh, but this is, this is what we currently have, and it has since been spent, hopefully more to come in the future. Any questions about the grants? Okay. Angela, I'm sorry, if we could go back two slides. Um, two slides? Yeah, just on the, the fundraising side. Um, yeah, I don't think we need any consensus on this now, but um, maybe between now and the January meeting, you all want to think about um, what that running balance is you want to maintain. And if there is an amount you want to free up for art, as Angela mentioned earlier, but I think giving some direction to staff as to what that right number is um, would, be, would be helpful. And that way we can free it up for the um, subcommittees to start making recommendations as to what they want to do with that that amount of money, whatever we can free up. Say we set set aside ten thousand dollars for scholarship um, and awards, and the balance perhaps can be you know put into the public art fund or what have if, you. If it's really at your discretion. So, if oh, now is the time, can we put that on the agenda then to discuss? Because I definitely mm -hmm. think that's an important conversation. Yeah. I think knowing that we could use any of this amount for scholarship certainly is exciting and makes, um, yeah, makes me think differently about this amount of money, so. Absolutely. I, I, it's a great idea to put it on the agenda. And I was also wondering, Gary, um, what is the general mechanism that either has worked for you guys historically or that you would recommend for, I mean, we can have a discussion in January, um, but in terms of making decisions or um, just giving specific direction as opposed to a conversation, um, what tends to work for you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe between now and January, we can uh, do a little more analysis on sort of the cash flow and uh, provide some recommendations to you all. Um, okay, that'd be a great place to start. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay, then we come to developer contributions. So these are funds negotiated with developers prior to and or outside of the public art requirement in the municipal code. So um, not to be confused with the, the special revenue fund that we just talked about uh, in our recent audit and diving into more of the budget and working closely with planning, um, we have discovered uh, $33,000 um, that was being held in a separate fund that has been designated for public art. Um, as far as we know, this, this is unrestricted and also available to the commission for your consideration. And then as you know, um, there's the $45,000 that we have um, earmarked for Caltrain that um, is currently specified for the sculpture project, but could um, eventually be released if 
it is not needed as contingency. Angela, this $33,000, is designated for public art, but has not been part of our, has never appeared on our budget. Correct. So this is available to us. Correct. In Sorry. addition to our, the budgeted money that we have on, on our, on our budget. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It, okay. It's not to be confused with the third, a third a, the amounts are very close. <laughs> yeah, I think this amount was was Angela. It's, uh, was it? We found it was deposited into a, a special revenue account, which is basically an interest bearing account in 2010 or so. And um, you know, I. I Neither Angela or I were here at that point in time. So maybe Sharon has some historical information of where this came from, um, but it it is still um, uh, gathering interest. And so it started as a $30,000 developer contribution. And so that the 3,500 um, is from that interest, but um, it is uh, available and at the commission's discretion to use. Amazing. Let's not worry about where it came from. We'll consider it a gift horse. I, I have a follow-up question to that. Um, and you may not be able to answer it, but if if it's gaining interest, do we know what that rate of interest is so that we know how much we want to take or how conservative, you know, how conservative or not conservative we want to be with this amount based on the potential for it to grow more well i think it's a 2010 contribution so three thousand dollars over 12 years not not yeah. a, and, and 10 percent in 12 years is not very much yeah, <laughs> yeah it's I not know. exactly knock me over it's uh, less than one percent i suppose right yeah thank yeah. you for doing that math for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so kind of in conclusion it sounds like there's about um, $53,000 for general public art available in this coming fiscal year. Um, and do we expect to essentially have that funding replenished or am I hearing because this was like, this 33 was, was a, or maybe Angela, you're getting to this, like the budget in the following year. So let me know if I should stop my question and just wait until you can, get through your presentation. Yeah, if you're talking about like, if, what is the opportunity for the commission to get more general fund money next fiscal year? We we try every year. It just depends on what council's priorities are. We're gonna go for the 50,000 that's annually been allotted for cultural arts projects. Um, and the, the budget process is going to begin probably in February um, in 2023. So it's, okay. it's on our list already. And I, I understand the ordinance is going to kick in, although there's a lot of uncertainty about what will be available from it. Yes, I am going to get to that one. Okay. So let's see, is that next? Yeah, sorry, Angela, I just oh. have one more, one more question because the budget sheet that was provided in our packet, mm -hmm. are, these, are these amounts not yet reflected in those? I couldn't no, it's it's it hasn't really because the the commission has really just kind of owned the um, the donations account that fund and oh. you know whatever's been in the general fund has has been managed separately. I I mean we I can now that we have this in this format um, I could package it differently. If we can add that to it just knowing that we're making recommendations of public art or um, I, it would be good to know for this commission what we have in that month. Okay. Yes, I can I can prepare that in January. Awesome, thank you. That's exciting. Okay. Almost like we got a big sign on bonus as a commission. Yeah, I think we felt like <laughs> that too. <laughs> Okay, well, and then here's some more big money for you all. Um, so it's still pending the planning process, but 
Um, we have $500,000 coming down the pike um, in a development agreement with IQHQ, which is just near the Caltrain station. So on this um, image here, it, it's, it's a rough drawing that shows a half mile radius of the campus. That's um, what the funds have been specified for. But you know, City Hall is here, if you can see my cursor, and IQHQ is just right next to the Caltrain station. Um, so this money, council um, is aware of this funding and has expressed interest in using it for an artistic gateway monument downtown on airport and grand. But that's something that we as staff are trying to work through, you know, like what does council wanna see um, so that we can, you know, work with the commission and, and kind of share with you what council's vision is and how best we can achieve that. What is IQHQ? Um, I don't know. Do you know, Greg? Is yeah, it it's, it's a biotech R&D campus developer. So they're building another, it's, it's quite large, um, R&D facility there. Okay. Um, and that was one of the um, uh, community benefits that was negotiated um, for a higher floor area ratio because they're going up higher than what is allowed, I believe, in the zoning code. So they had to make some sort of contribution to the city. And um, this was one the city council and city manager uh, lobbied them for. Nice. Um, and Angela, were you saying that it is sweet? Um, were you saying that city council was considering spending all 500000 on a sign? Not necessarily all of it. Um, oh. So, yeah, I think we'd want to do maybe an RFP and um, similar to the Caltrain um, station um, gotcha. project and try to get some uh, proposals submitted to the city of what could happen. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be a traditional gateway sign. The thought was it should be some sort of artistic, um, uh, I don't know, uh, something <laughs> to welcome you into the downtown core. And um, it could be an arch. It could be more of like a, a totem. It could be more you know, like an obelisk kind of thing. It could be whatever. Um, and it's really, uh, I think, a, you know, the, it'll be this group making that recommendation. Oh, okay. You could spend all of it. You could spend a part of it. And then the rest of it could be spent somewhere else in this zone. Um, or you can dedicate some of it for maintenance as well of existing art. That was also um, a condition. Um, but so the, the vision was something more dramatic than just a sign. Yeah. It's not like. Cool. Nice. Hey, Greg, I have a question. So this is exciting to me because it's something that we had recommended years ago and we're told it had never made it to a meeting or a recommendation, but we were told that it wasn't possible because of engineering and because of traffic. And um, so I guess my question is, will anything be done at that foot of Grand Avenue or will they be starting the Grand Avenue um, plan to widen that to help insulate it from traffic or will that have to be built in as part of a plan cost on this? Do we have an idea? Yeah, well, I, I guess it, still up in the air is where would this thing go um it could cross you know span from the shell station to pete's right there on grand at airport um or it could be sort of a single obelisk kind of piece of art um you know I, we would have to probably get just a study done to make sure you know mm -hmm. if it were there um you know spanning is at the right height to allow for truck access and all that 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 has, has not been yet done um I do know that the overall um, streetscape improvements on Grand Avenue are not funded. However, there is a major endeavor on airport to make that crossing safer, uh, slow traffic a bit at the intersection. Um, so maybe there's some nexus there. We can look into that and see if there's some opportunity sites within that plan. Awesome, that's exciting. Yeah. What's the ETA of when you Early next year. To finalized. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it'll be at issuance of their building permit. So uh, early 2023, at some point. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, 
that's really great. Okay, next we have our capital improvement fund. And so um, this accounts for revenues and expenditures associated with the acquisition, construction, or improvement of city owned facilities and infrastructure for parks and recreation, and even for cultural arts. We're very excited. This is funding our new ball field, our new community center and library, um, our new aquatic center. Uh, the Centennial Trail Park, everything that you, um, that Deputy Director Philip Vitale presented at the last meeting, that's the Capital Projects, Capital Improvement Fund. And so um, at this time, no funds are, have been identified specific for art as part of those projects. But um, as I said at the last meeting, you know, Philip is a supporter of the arts as well and is trying to do what he can to identify some budget savings and keep an eye out for art opportunities. Um, and so we hope to have more information for the commission as well um, by January about what our opportunities are available within these capital projects. And, and even if we can't fund it now, you know, um, building in the infrastructure that would allow you to consider certain sites as um, locations for art in the future. Any questions about this one? Okay. And then we're nearing the end here. So um, I believe all of you are familiar with the public art requirement. And so basically um, for non-residential development projects, um, developers can either make a uh, contribution, so they're essentially paying a fee of half a percent of construction costs into the public art fund, or they can choose to spend 1% of construction costs for acquisition and installation of public art on their development site. And so staff, um, we recently got an update from the planning division about just what the projected, um, if developers paid the fee, what the estimated art fee would uh, be, or if they installed art, what the value of the art would be. And so the um, items highlighted here are the ones that could be realized sometime soon. Um, I don't have confirmation if these developers are choosing to pay the fee uh, or, well, actually, I think, um, I can't remember which ones of these we've talked to, but they're, in, general, in general, um, the developers that we've been talking to through the public art master plan process and just through questions of how, you know, they should determine whether they pay the fee or install art, um, many have expressed a desire to just install art on their site. So um, at this time, I think if you all remember some of the projections we shared previously in 2021, I put you know estimated fiscal years. We've kind of done away with that because there's just so much uncertainty with um, you know the the timeline and the status of these development projects, and it's hard to know which is which. But you know, we're working with the planning division to try to get as much information and kind of build in a process so that we can share whatever information we know with the commission and kind of be able to plan for what's to come. But, um, and, and, oh, sorry. Oh, go on. <laughs> okay, um, just to clarify the, one of the highlights for the IQHQ phase one, that if, if they, we're going to um, put the amount towards an estimated art fee. That 639 would be in addition to the 500 and specifically for art, not necessarily like through city council. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And we and we have um, chatted with the IQHQ folks. I think it's almost certain that they will provide art on site. Um, and same with the phase three, that last line there, the 2.7 million, they're most likely doing an on-site um, installation. But uh, the great thing is, you know, at the end of the day, we're still going to have between 22 and $45 million in valuation of public art 
that we can count towards our public art inventory in South San Francisco, which is um, still amazing. Yeah, that is incredible. And and now I understand seeing these numbers uh, again, or at least in this particular format, um, that we are thinking about, um, you know, and, and this, will, this will flow very nicely into the subcommittee update, but we're thinking about how to um, have the right incentives and thoughtfully um, uh, address what to do with this kind of money because it is significant. Certainly, and I think this will come up as our um, master plan um, continues to evolve and get feedback from you all um, as we are looking at the ordinance. And um, there may be some recommendations you all have on um, the art fee and splitting it. And certainly we've heard from you all applying it for residential developments, maybe a recommendation of the commission. Uh, so we will welcome that feedback when that time is right. Great. And then um, last slide. So I, I think Greg might have mentioned it earlier, but just one final point to keep in mind as you may be considering, you know, great ideas for how to pursue or how to spend this money is that the city currently does not have a discrete budget to cover the maintenance of art. So historically, any artwork needing maintenance would be covered by a special budget request, like it was for the restoration of the Prometheus mural, or um, it's been spent from the city's maintenance budget as funds are available. So that um, hasn't been ideal because there are so many competing needs in the maintenance world um, with health and safety being a priority. Um, the commission may know, you know, like the windswept repair has taken a little while. Um, but this, so, you know, we do what we can with the budget we have, but um, it, hopefully that's something we can address in the master plan as well is just having that budget set aside for ongoing maintenance uh, because it, it is quite costly. And um, so in summary, the commission's total discretionary budget at this time is roughly $43,500. And I calculated that based on the 10,000 you have in the general fund, plus the 33,500 that was, um, you know, we recently discovered in developer contributions. So that's $43,500. That amount could potentially be increased if you wanna add in what um, you have in your fundraising account, which is another 30, $2,000 um, and as, as has been requested, we can put that on the, a future agenda to kind of talk about what the commission sees as a safe running balance to keep in that account so that you can continue to um, grant scholarships. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, this isn't an action item. We just wanted to share it for your information, but open it to discussion if anyone has anything else to add. Really appreciate that, Angela. Thank you for walking through that with us. And it, it brought up, you know, that we want to, yeah, use that information, digest it, and talk some more in January about it. Um, so I, I actually else? had two, two points I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, I feel like just with that, with that presentation, I feel like Wow, we walked into 30,000, 33, 35,000, and then potential 500,000 for the obelisk near Grand Caltrain. And then again, we'll find out, but potentially 22 to 45 million potential realized gains as well. Like, that's phenomenal. Like, I don't know. I just feel we're all kind of a little even keel on stuff. And I'm just, I don't, I don't, I don't everyone expresses it differently, but I'm just like, wow. Like, I don't know if that was all surprising, but that's kind of one thing, like I mean, my eyes just got bigger, seeing all that potential that's there. So like, that's pretty fucking amazing. I have a similar, a similar reflection. However, I mean, I think prior to this meeting, at least I was under the impression that we had about $30,000. So seeing that public art fund after was a bit reassuring that, okay, well, at least we still, have about that much. Um, the other programs, most definitely. 
I think my while it's fresh on my mind, I do want to just express that I, with seeing what we saw, I strongly feel our cultural arts fund should not be used for public art and our public art fund should be used for public art. And so I know we talked about maybe being open to changing that. Um, it's all public money, but the cultural arts fund should definitely be more community based to what our cultural arts programs fund. Um, and yeah, so seeing those line items of these other pieces with these budgeted budgets that we see monthly, I think will help kind of clarify that month to month. Um, and just top of mind, um, I think earmarking just a percentage of the public arts fund for maintenance seems to make sense. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, I look forward to that next discussion and kind of analysis and recommendations. Absolutely. To, to build off of that, if I may, um, I, I, it would be great to hear, um, to note, like maybe here by January, if city staff had a suggestion for what the maintenance um, uh, could be next year for art, just like ballpark so that we could think about in that 53.5 thousand dollars that we're, we're thinking about for public art, how much of that would be ideal to put towards maintenance? I mean, if it's, if it's all of it, we might not want to put all of it towards it and we might want to ask the council for help, but you know, just to start thinking about it. And then um, I agree with Michael, if we kind of think of our budget for um, uh, the upcoming next 12 months as um, that 53,000. Um, and then I, I would like to be optimistic that that's going to be replenished the following year. So we we should just go ahead and spend it and make sure it gets spent, you know, wisely, but for public art um, and and it's it's there to be used. So. And and I also think another thing to keep in mind is um, and this will get to the subcommittees as well, but um, urban arts, for instance, has this this 56 kind of sitting there ready to be used once we get the RFQ out and we're get the mural artist picked and figured out exactly what we want to do there. So um, in, in some ways murals um, are, are kind of covered for next year, or at least if, you know, in the current budget situation. So that, that 53, I would encourage other subcommittees to really um, um, think about the right way to spend that for, for sculpture and, and community uh, engagement and, and um, uh, performing arts and whatnot. So, um, since I'm basically talking about the subcommittee, I should back up for a second. Are there any other comments or questions about um, Angela's presentation right now? Thank you, Angela. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Angela, cool. I feel like the uh, the presentation is, might be a little easier to read than the 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 staff report. Maybe we do should we send that out? We could we could share that with you all. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I think um, when uh, the <laughs> so, yes, yeah, when oh, ABC right. gets the report back to us, that that can kind of give us a direction of where money should go to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You read my mind because that is that was going to be the first thing out of my mouth <laughs> for what I believe to be the next agenda item. <laughs> it is. Go, go ahead, Michael. <laughs> okay. So yes, that's exactly why we have a public math a uh, public art master plan underway. So this is fantastic. Um, good work is happening. Um, the update on this is that between now and December 6th, the community engagement piece will end. And really it's between now and the end of November. Um, but within this time, we're, we're the public art master plan consultants um, will be conducting focus groups with a, three virtual focus groups, one with educators, one with artists and um, one virtual community meeting 
Um, the educators group is on November 28th at 530 p.m. The virtual artist focus group is on November 28th at 7 p.m. And the community meeting is on November 29th at 6 p.m. Um, following that will be small group meetings with commissioners uh, December 5th and 6th. Um, keep that in mind just um, with your schedule that staff or consultants may be reaching out if they indeed are able to put these together, which would be intended to be in-person um, meetings. And I see Ursi has her hand up, so she probably has something to correct me on. Yeah, no, no corrections actually to embellish that particular comment. Um, Karen will be contacting you um, via email with some options for uh, signing up for those in-person meetings. There'll be three of them. Um, one on Monday, December 5th, between 12.30 and 1.30. Uh, one on Monday, December 5th, between 6 and 7. And one on Tuesday, December 6th, between 6 and 7. And so what we're looking for, they're, they're intended to be live, in-person, small groups of commissioner meetings. Uh, so we're going to be reaching out to all of you to give us your um, availability for one of those three dates. Uh, and again, as I said, you'll probably be getting something um, uh, in the next couple of days from Karen well, no, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow from Karen uh, uh, related to uh, getting those um, uh, decisions by, by the commission at large. That's all. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Michael. Awesome. No, thank you. That's great. Um, the two that haven't been scheduled yet, they're still working on dates, is the Unified School District in South City um, and the city attorney. Uh, so those will be scheduled as well. Um, so the outreach that's planned is the um, a public art master plan focused newsletter that'll go out. Um, it was anticipated to roughly go out within this next week. Um, and then social media posts to push the survey and community meeting with a reminder that the survey closes November 30th. So feel free to amplify that to anyone and everyone that you know. Um, and following the community engagement is the writing of the plan, which the consultants will do December to February, and then refining the plan March to May. And again, we'll have touch points um, throughout that process, but that's where we are at as of today with the Public Art Master Plan. Any questions? Okay, back to you, Risha. Well, I'm actually going to kick it over to, I think, you and Lynn, and, and Lynn, your sculpture committee, right? Um, I, I, I heard a rumor that we're going to see a little presentation or something. Um, well, we the subcommittee has two items that I would like us to go over. First of all, um, the relocation of windswept. We have been given permission or have been asked that the windswept be located when it's repaired on the grounds of the new building, the library recreation building. Um, the windswept apparently has, or the, the artist has apparently okayed um, a welder, an artisan welder who can repair the piece and have it ready for installation. And very fortunately for us, um, through grants and some of these other things that Ursi and Aaron seem to know all about, uh, and Angela, um, it the installation and the repair of the piece will not cost us anything. So that is a definite plus, and I'm delighted that it's going to go in the garden at the new building, because I think that will be an ideal place for it. Are there any questions? No, okay. but that sounds great. Yeah, I'm thrilled to death. I think it's marvelous. Um, and the second thing is the sculpture that um, the modern industrial 
piece that we have a presentation for you, thanks to Michael. Uh, however, since the presentation was originally planned, we've had news about um, engineering problems with its location. So I'll let Michael go with that. And Michael, will you handle the presentation and the questions? Sure. Um, Angela, do you have that available to share on screen by chance? If not, I could um, share my screen, but. Yes, I have it here. Awesome, thank you. So we could go down to slides, yeah. So here are pictures of the original um, piece as proposed back in 2019. Um, we wanted to bring this back to the commission because it's largely a new commission. So pretty much everybody probably is not familiar with this piece other than uh, Lynn, Peter, and myself. But um, this was the piece that was approved in 2019. It was the piece that was approved, you'll see is actually the photograph on the left, um, the leftmost photograph. Um, and at the time, this piece cost $4,500. That didn't include the installation and delivery. Um, this got approved. Um, by council and then the budget got frozen due to COVID and eventually went away. Um, so what led us to recommending this in the first place was that the artists, the artist design we felt really reflected South San Francisco's industrial history. It reflected the steel production used for the Golden Gate Bridge and the World War II ships. It um, reflected the pottery and brick produ production and kind of had a nod to DNA sequencing um, and the artist believes has a feeling of an abacus. So, um, so with all those, um, we originally made the recommendation. And so as time passed, you know, we knew we wanted to revisit this. We talked about revisiting it. And so with the opportunities at the Library Parks and Rec building, and knowing that you know art hasn't really been considered yet for that space, but knowing that we're kind of in that time period right now where art would, we might even be a little late in the game, but <laughs> art would be included in those grounds. We wanted to see how this could be incorporated and if it could be incorporated. So that, brings us to the next slide where we reached out for a proposal. Um, the updated proposal that he brought back to us, you all had in your packet. Um, it's a proposal that included two pieces, two different but complementary pieces. Um, the seven foot sculpture is 8,500. That now includes travel and installation. And the nine foot sculpture is at a cost of 12,500. So the nine foot sculpture, the seven foot sculpture is roughly 200 pounds and would be, these would both be commissions. They're, they'd be new pieces designed specifically for South San Francisco, um, taking into account any feedback that we might have on this um, particular design. But the, what you see now on this slide is the image on the left is the rendering of the nine foot piece, roughly 300 pounds. The photo right beside it is just a photographic representation of what would be similar to the seven foot piece, roughly 200 pounds. Um, so with these, we really thought that the location and you know talked to the artist about this location which is no longer viable which is the path that you see on the bottom of our screen um, that leads up to the second floor entrance of the library parks and rec from el camino rail um, our thinking with that was it really invoked 
creativity, the history of South San Francisco, the innovation and industrial nature and, um, and art. I mean, what people have the ability to do when they go to the new Library of Parks and Rec building. So um, I, I'm still disappointed that art can't be in that space for that reason. However, um, as a backup location, actually the city will be providing us with a list of um, possible locations for the grounds. Um, and our initial thought is the potential pathway that is north, yes, north of the building that will be um, really at the end of Arroyo going down around the building um, to the parking lot side. Um, but that's all to be determined. And um, I think really we just wanted to share this with the commission, get any feedback, ideas, um, again, because it's largely a new commission and um, you know, it is a new opportunity as opposed to the one that we had previously put through. Any initial um, thoughts or questions? Yeah, yeah. no, that, I mean, it's it's really cool that this has been so vetted and um, and very thoughtful. Um, sorry that you didn't get the placement that you wanted. Um, and I guess the uh, sculpt the sculpture subcommittee will once you have a list of potential alternative places, probably be making a recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, that was the piece of my presentation I forgot, which is. Um, City staff is gonna give us a list of those locations. We're gonna meet and hopefully determine the location um, by January's meeting so that we can make a recommendation at that time. Cool. Um, and you still have room on your, um, on your subcommittee, right? We do. So commissioners, if, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in being part of that decision process, um, still join. And um, I guess the other thing is just a, a like we were just talking about budget. Um, you've proposed a budget of twenty one thousand for this. Um, was some of that already set aside from the twenty nineteen approval, or is that going to come out of our fifty three? So that's going to come out of if we were to accept this and push it toward um, a recommendation, then it would, I believe, come out of the 33,587 public art based on the presentation we just previously saw. Um, gotcha. Um, yeah. City staff, could you confirm that? Yes, that, that could be one consideration for how the commission would fund this. We can, okay. you could split it between them, the general fund amount of $10,000. Mm -hmm. And I just want to explain, I'm so sorry that site did not work. Um, I spoke with Jake Gilchrist, the director of capital projects who's managing this project. And it doesn't look like it, but beneath that walkway is uh, actually, a, it's basically a living roof. So there's actually more of the facility beneath that walkway. And um, I think had we um, engaged this uh, idea, maybe as Michael said, maybe a little bit earlier, we could have re-engineered the way that pathway goes, um, but where it would, any of the landscape in there is essentially sitting on a roof membrane. And if we were to puncture the roof membrane, um, then we're going, we may see issues with water infiltration into the building below. It's actually the, the first floor restrooms are right below that walkway. So I think we, we probably missed it by about two months, unfortunately. So sorry. No, it's fair. Yeah. But well, we're looking forward to uh, receiving that list. Uh, I, I, I presume that um, the list will be coming from the builder and will be sent to you. And if it would be possible, I, I think the subcommittee would appreciate it. If you could notify us as soon as possible, we'd really like to get a meeting going so that we can get this it has been long overdue and I'd like to see it accomplished. Mm -hmm. I know it won't get finished this year, but 
maybe sometime very early next year. Certainly. Um, and, you know, I was just thinking once we have that list, if you if the subcommittee would like to actually go out in the field and, you know, get a sense of the place and where might be some good locations to put the artwork, I would be happy to take you all. Um, the flat work is starting. Um, retaining walls are starting to go up in the park. And so are uh, some of the unit pavers that are kind of in this really cool gradient mosaic. Um, it's looking really cool out there. So we may have to do some uh, site tours soon with the whole group too. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you. So and that's it for us. Thank you. Right. Any other Wait. questions for the sculpture? Go ahead, Angela, sorry. Before we move on, I just wanted to clarify, um, Lynn, it sounds like you, the, the subcommittee is recommending that windswept be relocated to um, what's what we're calling as the native garden. Do home. we need a vote for that, Angela? Yeah, I, I just would like to formalize it and I can share my screen um, here. I, I don't anticipate any problems, but these are recommendations we make to council. And, um, you know, so just when we run it through, I'd like to have the uh, recommendation on the record as approved by the commission. It, well, I would move that we mm -hmm. recommend to council that this be located where, uh, wherever the garden place is that has been submitted to us by the people who are engineering the grounds. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna second that and just I just want to draw people's attention to those notes. Um, it seems like a very good logic for for the relocation. So I second the motion. Karen, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, we'll do. Okay, Commissioner Boldenwick? Yes. Vice Chair Bond? Yes. Commissioner Bowen, who is absent. Um, Commissioner Dinatali? Yes. Commissioner Foley? Commissioner Foley? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Lester is absent. Commissioner Maharaj? Yes. Commissioner Pomposa? Uh, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. And Commissioner Zelaya? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I think it's just going to look amazing when the facility is opened and day one we'll have something monumental there. So thank you. Cool. Great recommendation. All right. Great. Um, so any other questions for sculpture or, or, or comments? All right. Then we'll move on to urban arts. I'll give a very brief report on that. Um, so as you saw in Angela's slides earlier, we um, have an RFQ being drafted. I think we're in second or third draft. Um, and that is to establish a list of uh, mural artists. And that will then flow into the process of picking um, uh, proposals, a mural, and sending those proposals um, to a good list of mural artists for, for instance, the, I should say, 2D wall art um, artists. Um, for uh, the graffiti abatement projects and beyond. So that's one of the updates. The other update is that um, we had a small, or have a small utility, utility box um, uh, art refresh. And originally we were going to have the, an artist um, uh, paint directly on the uh, utility box as, um, as we've done in the past. Um, the artist isn't available, so we're gonna try a printed vinyl wrap of art and um, see how we like that. It's a, it's a um, small scale project. And um, I think that will be um, in some ways an experiment for us, um, for the Art Commission in general for urban arts and specifically for 2D art, because um, if we like that vinyl wrap, that could be a good um, solution to certain projects where either the artist isn't available or 
Um, maybe there's some logistical reason why it is hard to paint in an area. Um, uh, and this is just a, a little test project. So that's the update. Uh, questions about urban arts? I was just going to note, sorry, um, it, it may also be a great application for digital artists to apply their, mm. their works in a uh, you know, public setting or yeah, semi permanent way. Nice point, yes. Okay, so with that, we'll move on to um, the youth art programs and specifically the art show. Um, I, I I will, I guess, uh, speak uh, um, or update the commission on uh, the youth art programs um, in the absence of uh, Commissioner Bowen. Uh, the uh, uh, Chair Bowen and uh, myself met with the South San Francisco, and Aaron, <laughs> Aaron did as well, with the South San Francisco uh, Visual Art Unified District Visual Arts Subcommittee uh, to plan, begin planning the presentation of the 2023 Youth Art Show um, for the benefit um, of the entire commission and new commissioners. Uh, the uh, partnership between the South San Francisco Unified School District and the uh, Cultural Arts Commission is uh, over 20 years um, of presentation of uh, unified school district art that encompasses work from kindergarten through high school in all forms of media, visual media, and it also included a performing arts uh, aspect and um, craft activities uh, for participants. So of course, as everything, it was interrupted in, for the year 2020, 2021, um, because of COVID in 2022, uh, the, uh, a, a few pieces were entered uh, through the uh, Unified School District uh, liaison, but um, it, it was problematic. It was online entry, so um, it was a problematic process. So next year, we are going to our full-on live exhibit, and um, the dates for the exhibit are uh, March 10 and 11. And the dates, the times will be similar to what uh, occurred uh, in, in the past. That is the uh, Friday uh, evening event will start at four o'clock, I believe, four to 7.30. That is so that uh, school members can come directly from school to the participate in the um, individual art exhibit. And, uh, and then the Saturday is a 10 to four uh, timing. Um, the school district in the meeting did express that uh, as many businesses uh, and municipalities are experiencing a very uh, short staff problem, staffing problem. And so normally it is the teachers that come in on Friday and in a whirlwind uh, uh, put up art. However, in this case for 2023, um, if uh, at that time they are in a similar situation, um, perhaps they will reach out to commission to help to install art. Um, and there will be a, uh, a follow-up presentation virtually as well. Um, that's all I have at this time. Uh, a few more meetings are planned um, uh, prior to the prior to the event. Uh, if, are there any questions? Well, more to follow on that then, thank you. Okay, great, thank you, Rosie. Um, so the, the next uh, subcommittee is fundraising and I believe this is the one that we need a new chair for this. Um, are we, do we have somebody to give an update? I'll give an update, but to my knowledge, we haven't um, met. Okay. No update. Sorry. No updates. Got you. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely want to encourage um, new commissioners to um, join all the commissions uh, subcommittees. Sorry that um, that have room and um, the fundraiser in particular. And I think, as mentioned, perhaps the fundraising subcommittee will be voting for their chairperson. Um, at their next meeting. 
Um, next one is uh, the 2D art show in January. So that's me again. Um, essentially, as I mentioned earlier, um, the um, call for art is going to be going out um, hopefully by the end of this month or early in December. And um, that I'll just describe that it's for 2D art and that we have a theme. And even though I suggested the theme, I have forgotten it. Ursi, will you please remind us? Yes, uh, the theme is abundance. So we're de yeah. I'm developing the flyer right now, um, but that will kind of be encompassing. Uh, and it is primary, it is two-dimensional art in all media, photography, uh, painting, graphic, uh, and et cetera, computer. Perfect. Perfect. And um, one more note on that there, uh, Ursi sent out a docent list. Um, we'll be doing reminders. Please, please sign up to help put up art, meet artists, and agree artists and bring in their art, put it up. It was really fun putting up the um, the uh, Day of the Dead show. So, um, and uh, very rewarding to um, also uh, greet the public as a docent um, in the art show. So please sign up. And if no questions about that, we'll move to performing arts, please. Yeah, uh, no update right now. Um, I had I came down with COVID a few over the last few weeks, so I haven't had really been out of commission uh, last few weeks. So I'm hoping to have a meeting in early December um, with the committee and have some traction to report on in January, um, at least with some potential events uh, coming up in the new year. Cool, that sounds good. Uh, I'm sorry to hear they're sick. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah. And, um, no, uh, when you when you do have a chance to meet, if you want to um, coordinate on doing anything at the art show. I'm still very enthusiastic about that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do. Actually, my wife uh, found a lead potentially on a next door. Um, it's someone that I haven't had a chance to connect with, um, but she passed it along and I was pretty interested. Um, just someone who was lo local, who was, does uh, does music. Um, and I didn't get to read that in full detail yet, but it's uh, but I got a lead. Um, and cool. so I will be in touch. All right, cool. Okay, that's great. Good. All right, um, so I believe that concludes the subcommittees. Um, and I think we're ready to move on to items from commission. I have a couple things I wanted to bring up. Um, one, I just sent an image to um, Angela in the chat if she's able to share it, but um, basically, Youth Arts reminded me that the Bay Creative Foundation is giving away $50,000 to Bay Area high school artists. Um, so they have an open call for submissions right now that ends January 12th. Um, you see the information right there. It really is a, spans a bunch of different um, disciplines and was promoted by the San Mateo County Cultural Arts Commission. So wanted to share that here as well because that deadline is January 12th. So they're definitely deserving artists here in South San Francisco who can use that um, and obtain that. And um, also wanted to call out that um, in the final Orange Park Master Plan, I saw that the art studios were, um, there is a designated space for art or maker studios in that plan. That means there's no guarantee, but that means that the feedback that we have given as commission um, made a difference because I know that there were times during that process where that wasn't the case. So, um, Greg might have more about that, but I just wanted to thank um, everyone at the city and Parks and Rec for working to make that part of um, the Orange Park plan. Thank you. Um, yeah, then, awesome. Good, good call out, Mike. Michael. Yeah. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind because in the future, if we ever get that, we can expand the art opportunities maybe to industrial um, art, welding, sculpture um, classes, considering that it's right next to the facilities and maintenance. It seems like it would be a good space for um, 
a little more. Yeah. And actually, um, what we're hoping to put in that, um, there's a maintenance yard uh, adjacent to it. But a part of our hope there is to put a, um, a staff run nursery, like for growing plants. And so that may be it. I know, Michael, that's another one of your passions, but uh, oh, maybe yeah. there's some nexus there um, in terms of the arts and the natural resources. But um, We could well garden you. art. I don't know how, but I'm willing to learn. <laughs> we know uh, who to call. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, my The last thing, sorry I have so many things this time, but um, I recently became aware that classes at um, our Bay Area or our San Mateo County Community Colleges are offering, they're offering free registration to San Mateo County residents. So wow. it is a great opportunity if spaces still exist in those classes to register for continued education in art if you're interested or any other um, courses as well. So just wanted to put that out there and if That's anyone wants free, to do, free, no charge. So there are some fees associated, I believe like books and materials or, um, but it's very um, minimal, hmm. so, uh, very minimal. And um, if anyone else wants to join the mural class on Saturdays, I so far am enrolled in it again. So, um, yeah, that's it, that's all I got. Cool, thank you, Michael. Thank you. All right, um, I think we're ready for items from staff. I can, I can start that off. So um, this is an update related to the um, San Francisco Opera inquiry into a, a presentation in South San Francisco next year. Um, first, I will start with by saying we do not have a signed agreement yet, but we wanted to put the, the information on your radar so you can um, mark your calendars. Um, right now for, for your preliminary planning, the, the dates are March 17, 18, and 19. Uh, the location would be Orange Memorial Park. Um, the for performances are slated to be an hour. Uh, two of the performances, uh, uh, I'm sorry, two sunset performances would occur or planned for the 17th and the 18th, and one matinee for the 19th. Um, so uh, again, it is it, this is not yet a done deal, but it's looking optimistic. So um, uh, hopefully uh, it'll go through and um, just put those dates on your calendar. Exciting. Wonderful. And then my second, uh, it relates to upcoming events. Uh, the, for coming back again, yay, <laughs> post COVID, is the South San Francisco Civic Ballet's performance of the Nutcracker. Uh, the, uh, this is a major production put on by the South San Francisco Civic Ballet, which is supported uh, under the auspices of the Art Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, it, it, it is returning again, finally, uh, post-COVID. Uh, this year, uh, we uh, expect uh, over 50 performers, both uh, youth, children, uh, representing 31 dance classes within the department and feature primarily children, but also some adult, uh, adults performing in this um, classic uh, holiday uh, um, per, um, uh, performance. Uh, the performance will be Saturday, December 17th. There will be two shows. And Sunday, December 18th, there will be one matinee. Uh, the location is in South San Francisco High School Auditorium, and uh, ticket sales will begin November 28th. Uh, commissioners uh, will be uh, uh, entitled to two complimentary tickets, and we will have more, uh, send you more uh, information via email uh, in the next few weeks. 
and I have seen it and literally I was truly impressed. I, I had no idea that we put on a production that was that it, it was totally awesome. I was, I was amazed. So if you haven't seen the production, take advantage of those tickets because it's really worth it. Our, our uh, ballet, the ballet coordinator, uh, Maria Spremich, who uh, um, has put this production on, uh, puts on something as near to professional as is possible, including sets and costuming and, and everything that one might expect in a Nutcracker. Um, and she actually in the past has also on occasion uh, participated with her civic ballet in our youth art programs or partnered events with the school district. So it is it is really great and you don't have to travel to the city and pay city prices <laughs> and you will be supporting our, our artistic uh, dancers here in South City. That's lovely. Great. Are there other items from staff? Uh, yes, I have a few more, but I, I know, um, I, I believe uh, Commissioner Maharaj might have to leave. So if it's okay with the vice chair, I don't know if, um, Dubin, you have anything you want to report or just need to excuse yourself. No worries. Sorry, everyone. My, my son's getting very tired, so I'm putting him to bed. So I hope it's okay. I hope you all have a great rest, a uh, great holiday season, and we'll be in touch with each other. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Right, take care, everyone. Thank you, Zubin. And thank you, everyone. Bye. I'll just carry on with some of our other events and also RSVPs that Karen has been collecting for us. But um, if you guys can join us and haven't RSVP'd yet, you're still welcome to drop into the Thanksgiving Fun Run this Saturday. Um, the race starts at 9 a.m. sharp. So it's better if you arrive about 15 minutes early just to get situated on time, get your um, racing bib on. If, if you know in advance, you know, I guess by tomorrow that you want to come, just shoot me an RC an email and we'll try to get you set up ahead of time. Otherwise, you can just show up your um, participation in the event is way your fee is waived as a commissioner. Um, it's a lot of fun. I like it. It's a, you know, short community event. And um, Ursi and I will be there, so you can walk with us if you don't want to run. <laughs> and then we also have our um, Santa Comes to Town event on Sunday, December 4th from 11 to 3. That's a free community event in which um, we partner with the Kiwanis Club for families to come and take pictures with Santa and have some hot cocoa all provided for free. And then the other fun event that you don't want to miss is our um, IPP wreath workshop featuring um, famous bow creator, <laughs> Lynn Boldenwick. Um, and so I believe that information is also in your email. That's on Saturday, December 3rd. Um, and there are two sessions for that. I think the morning session might be full. But, um, you know, just let us know what you're interested in. We can see what we can do to fit you in. We also have to-go kits. You can uh, just swing by and grab your greens and go. And I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Oh, and I guess just as far as um, holiday, continuing on the theme of holidays, a reminder that the recreation offices um, will be closed December 23rd through January 2nd. So during that time, we're closed to the public, although some staff may be working. Um, I haven't decided my own schedule yet, but you know, I'm generally around anyway, <laughs> if you need me, but I hope you all enjoy a happy holidays. And in any case, I guess we'll still be connecting with you in those small group sessions. So I still see you before then. Um, Greg, did you have something to add? Yeah, I'll just add, um, you may have all received a press release today. Um, uh, Mike Futrell, the city manager, has uh, accepted a job um, with City of Riverside as their city manager um, uh, in order to move closer to family. 
And so that'll be effective. Um, I think January 8th will be his last day in South San Francisco. So wow. yeah, there's going to be a little bit of uh, some growing pains here as we figure out who's our next fearless leader. Um, you know, I think discussions are ongoing to who will serve as the interim. Uh, just recruiting for that position generally takes like six months or so. It's going to be a, it's going to be a little bit of a long haul, but um, uh, we we will uh, we will miss him. So uh, he's been here for nine years now, and uh, a lot has happened in nine years in South City. A lot of change. Um, and I would just also note, we will invite you all to the Centennial Way, um, the next round of outreach for Centennial Way Master, or not Master Plan, but the actual improvements we're, we're, we're constructing between Huntington and Spruce. And uh, as Philip noted, we are doing our best to uh, find, if not funds for art, at least uh, opportunity sites for um, art. And we've heard some great feedback from the commissioners and public so far as to sort of what, um, your vision is, um, but we will uh, engage the public again and um, perhaps even sort of like what we're doing for the LPR building, um, identify some locations uh, for your feedback on where it makes sense to have different kinds of art, whether they're we've heard functional um, uh, or what have you. So that'll be in early December. Greg, with that said, is it possible when the when you come back in January with that finance update. Mm -hmm. Can we see when we talk about that public art fund, can we see um, what all those capital projects are that aren't funded? So like the Linden Park, I believe, uh -huh. um, the Centennial Trail, the Orange Park pool. Um, but just to kind of see those all in one place yeah. at the same time that we see the budget, I think will help us in absence of the public art master plan, just kind of get our brains mm -hmm. directed in the right place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can provide the, the snapshot again. And, um, you know, I was thinking during our presentation earlier on the budget, you know, each year we do request, um, we, we do request that $50,000. It doesn't have to be, I mean, we could try to lobby for some more um, and maybe we can even earmark um, so, you know, more specific amounts for each of these projects, we can try to make an ask. That's um, a great idea. So we can we can have that conversation in the new year for sure. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Um, well, I, it's getting up on two hours. Um, so I, I want to acknowledge we have a correspondence packet. Is there anything else that we need to cover tonight? Um, either city staff or something really specific in the correspondence packet? Uh, there, There is nothing. Well, there are a couple of surveys if you want to look through your packet um, or uh, organizations inviting participation in, in surveys that you might want to um, um, uh, respond to. So I would recommend that, uh, looking through the packet for that. And the other is, yeah, there are a lot of holiday things in addition to what we're doing here. So if you want to go up to Marin, there's about three or four, I think a John Denver concert. <laughs> so yeah, just something to explore in your, uh, in for holiday uh, entertainment. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, thank you all for a very good meeting. I believe we're, um, we're done with everything. If there's no further business um, to bring to the commission. Going once. Going twice. I, I would I would say uh, good job, Risha. <laughs> good <laughs> Very short job. notice. Really appreciate um, Angela and Ursi um, for prepping me tonight. Um, Ursi like kind of walked me through <clears throat> the agenda and got my head around it. So anyway, I, I hope that uh, it worked for everybody. Um, thank you so much for um, very uh, interesting and. Um, uh, productive feels like um, uh, meeting and I will see you all in the new year um, if, if not in a subcommittee or something like that. So um, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Everyone. Good night.